So what are we going to talk about today is a little bit on what is energy management, um, some about people's influences on energy management, data collection, information interpretation, action. Action is a really important part of this exercise. And then we'll mention um, some certification uh, paths available for energy management people. To start with, we're going to just talk a little bit about our, uh, what we call uh, Enbridge Demand Side Management Program. Enbridge side, uh, Demand Side Management Program helps customers like yourself um, in uh, conserving energy through a number of ways. Uh, we have three distinct areas where we help customers. One is residential, one is commercial, and one is industrial customers. Obviously, this is industrial customer base, so we're here to help you uh, save energy in your industrial facilities. We've been doing this for 15 years, as it said there, and um, how we've been doing this is a very simple. Uh, we try to develop knowledge amongst our customer base through workshops like this, through uh, newsletters, through in direct interaction with you, through our energy solution consultants. We feel that if you have information at hand, you will be better equipped to make right decisions in your own facilities, within your um, sphere of, of, of influence. The next one is opportunity identification. We work very hard with, your, with our customers. Uh, we provide some free testing. We provide some energy use analysis, uh, all free to you, that helps you make the right decisions where to invest your hard-earned money. Um, we back that up with some measurement. Uh, we have uh, people who can decide which kind of meters are best for you. We have people who can quantify key energy input so you know what you're looking for and, and what, what money you are asking for. What are you going to spend it on? Um, and then we back that all up with engineering analysis. We have eight um, engineers on our, on, in, in our team. Um, and all of them are very capable. I would put them up against any other energy engineer in North America. So please feel free to rely on them for, for their input and for their advice, which is free to you. And last bit is action and implementation. Unfortunately, that is up to you. Uh, we cannot help you with that one. Ultimately, it is up to you and your organization to actually implement <coughs> energy efficiency initiatives. Those are the things that will eventually save you money. Um, all of the other stuff is just preparation for it, and it's very important because it builds a good base, but ultimately it's action and implementation that saves the money. So. We, we can talk about it all we want, but really, what, what have we accomplished as, as industrial demand side management? So we saved 110 million cubic meters of natural gas, more than 20 million kilowatt hours of electricity, more than 800,000 cubic meters of water with our customers in a three-year period alone. So those are results 2010 to 2012. We don't have it yet audited for 2013, so we can put it up. But these are pretty good results, you would agree, I would think. And of course, customers have saved through reduced CO2 and the improved bottom line if you have that many cubic meters and energy saved. Okay, so let's go back to the energy management, the, the purpose of this workshop. Um, I see by the numbers that you showed up that there is a, quite a bit of interest in this topic. Uh, but um, let's try to define what energy management really means to us. Uh, there is many different ways to uh, uh, define it. There is many different ways of how somebody looks at energy management. Um, energy account center, quality center, uh, activity-based cost, avoided waste, ISO 50001, Six Sigma. Those are all different paths that people have taken and looked at for, uh, to quantify what their energy management initiatives should be and how should they be implemented. None of them are wrong. None of them are right. It depends on your particular situation and your environment. Um, what is really important for me to remember is what energy management is not limited to. That's far more important than defining what it is. So it's not limited to any one of these. I don't want anybody to think that energy management is just energy accounting. We're just going to charge a department for energy they use and that's all we're going to do. That's not energy management. That's accounting. Um, utility sub-billing, same thing, sub-metering. It's not a one-time project, definitely not a one-time project. I mean, if you want to quantify imp impact that one-time project has on your energy consumption, there are way better ways of doing it than implementing a whole energy management system around it. 
And ultimately, it's not about certification processes. Energy management is so much more. It, can, it has potential to be so much more for your facilities. And this is something that we try to impact and impart to you today. Energy management system as it is, as implemented, can never tell you what is wrong. So don't think that you'll implement something and it'll tell you what's going on. It will just tell you that something's going wrong and it will tell you, go look at it. This is very important. Somebody will tell you that something's going off the rails when it goes off the rails when properly implemented. It has all, in many, many different ways and only one purpose. It saves money. If energy management system does not save you money, it is misimplemented. And lastly, I cannot stress this enough, and I'll be repeating this throughout the day, energy management system does not do anything on its own. You have to take action based on the information energy management system gives you to actually save money. There has been many people who have implemented energy management systems. They put computers in, they have nice graphs, they've never done anything since, and they've saved absolutely nothing. Computers do not save money, people do. So in our world, the way we look at the energy management, people are the cornerstone of this process. Without people, you really can't do much. But you have to give people something to work with. So we have a data collection system that comes along with the energy management. Then you have to interpret the information the data collection system gives you. And ultimately, you have to do some action. You have to implement something. You have to change something. You have to make a, a change to be able to be successful in this implementation. So let's see about people. First, um, I wouldn't say the most important, but it's one of the key elements is you have to get management buy-in. You're ultimately asking your management to give you some resources, like money, like people, to give you some time and some cash, hard cash, current cash today in exchange for a promise of the better tomorrow. You have to remember that when you ask for money like this. You're asking something to give you now for potentially giving back later. So that's how you have to frame it. You have to be able to describe that in, in those terms. Equally as important is employee buying. People on the shop floor, those are the guys who turn the knobs. Those are the guys who actually influence how much energy your facility will use at any given time. Their problem, of course, is change management. You're changing something that they used to do for years and years and years. You have to manage that. You have to be able to give them that uh, freedom to make those, that change. And secondly, of course, they look at it as additional performance visibility. It's not enough that I have to make 100 widgets an hour. Now I have to make 100 widgets an hour and only use three gigajoules doing that. So you have to be able to, to manage that. You have to give them proper training. An ultimate goal of this energy management system is awareness to treat energy like any other raw material. So if I need 10 pounds of something to create three widgets, they should be aware that they can use anywhere between 2.5 and 2.8 gigajoules doing that. Once you create that awareness, everything else becomes much simpler. So people aspect is very, very important. Um, I have been around long enough now to know, to remember that when PLCs were fairly new, there was no such thing as a recipe on the line. You had to manually input everything. Now, that's not a problem. You can collect thousands of data points. Last system that I implemented at one of the places that I worked with before, we had 2,200 data points that we were collecting from one line. We had six of those lines. So data collection is not a problem. Hardware is cheap. You can send data now around the world in a flash. But workforce has not changed significantly. It's not like any one of us can process more information than we could 20 years ago. Maybe less, arguably, at least for me. So we have all these leaning, we want to be lean, we want to have as, as much work done with as little people as possible. So we're all overwhelmed. We have all this information coming at us, more and more information every day, and less time to process it. So we need to create a system that will enable this processing of information for us. 
That's the purpose of energy management system. That's how you have to look at it. Of course, that creates um, special uh, considerations for energy management systems. Because if you buy a piece of equipment for your production, it's fairly limited in scope. There's only so much you can do. Energy management opens up a whole sorts of possibilities out there. Do you want to work on your HVAC system? Do you want to work on your production systems? Do you want to work on your um, abatement system? Where to spend the money? How much money to spend? It gives you so much more potential and so much more information that you have to deal with. So it requires knowledge to prioritize all these things. Do you want to spend $100,000 for the first year in something that's going to pay back in five years? Or something that's going to give you a year payback and you're going to look like a hero first year? You need a knowledge to make that decision. You can't just blindly do it. So the best way to do it is to do a comprehensive, I call it here energy audit. Don't be stuck on words here. Um, it can be energy scan. It can be any other way. Find out where energy is going inside your facility. So start from the meter, be it electrical meter, be it natural gas meter, be it water meter, and see where that energy is flowing. Where, what units are actually using that kind of energy? Make a little diagram. Do that. If you don't have a capability or you don't have the time, which is more important, to do that, get somebody in to do it. It's a relatively low investment for something that will base all your energy management decisions later on. So it's very important to have that right.